In this chapter, that is a hydraulic excavator, so far we have completed seven videos. That is the evolution, basics of the hydraulics, critical components of the machine, main pump, hydraulic motors, circuits, then swing device. Now, in this video, I am going to explain about the travel device that which is which are used to move the machine forward and reverse this is the excavator in the previous video we talked about this component this is the swing device which is used to rotate or revolve this superstructure of the machine over the base frame or the lower structure now let us discuss about the component which moves the entire mission forward and reverse and also helps to negotiate a turning on the road. As discussed, this is the superstructure, this is the base frame. The swing device is fitted for the superstructure, whereas the travel devices are fixed to this base frame. There will be two travel devices in the machine. One is fixed at left side, the other is fixed right side to rotate both the track chains. The track chains gives the grip with the ground to move the machine in the desired direction. So this is how the track chain revolves. Here you can see this is the travel device. In fact, the travel device is supposed to be backside of the machine when the machine is traveling. Okay, this is just for the understanding purpose. Please ignore the location. This is the travel device rotating and because of the travel device rotation track chain is moving and the machine is moving it is moving in the straight direction to negotiate a turning we must create the differential speed between the inner track and the outer track so that is possible by controlling the quantity of oil supply to the respective hydraulic motors fitted to the travel devices less oil quantity the less rotation less distance covered more oil quantity more rotations more distance covered now we'll go in detail about each and every component of the travel device and as well as traveling mechanism the complete machine traveling mechanism can be divided into two major components the first one is the travel device looks like this having one hydraulic motor and also the complete gearbox the second unit will be called as under carriage under carriage which is fixed to the base frame or lower structure of the machine again the under carriage having so many components the one is the sprocket this one which is fitted here over this collar sorry this collar means when the travel gearbox device rotates the sprocket also rotates the sprocket is meshed with the track chain bushings so when the sprocket wheel rotates the track chain also rotates then there are supporting components called the track rollers then the carrier roller then the idler the opposite end to the sprocket wheel to the base frame so these components are helpful to guide this track chain and also to arrest the slippage or sideways movement of the track chain let us see one by one again same components you can see in detail how they looks and one more component here which is called the track adjusting cylinder and also a spring here the purpose and construction of the part we will see in detail first we will go with the travel device the travel device mainly having an input device power input device which is again a axial piston motor we have explained in detail in a separate video about the hydraulic motor however just i'll brief you this is a bent axis motor or the motor can be a swash plate motor also for easy understanding let us look about the bent axis motor 
this is how it looks this component front component okay see this animation first see these figures this is the barrel housing this is the valve plate this is the piston base plate and this is the output shaft you can see there is a certain fixed angle is maintained between these two surfaces the surface of the barrel housing and the surface of the piston plate this is a bent axis motor why this angle is maintained this angle is maintained to convert the linear movement or the horizontal movement of these pistons into the axial movement so this ball states and this angle helps to convert this motion from linear motion to the axial motion the pressurized oil from the hydraulic pump through the control valve passes through this valve plate and enters inside the cylinders when the oil is entered inside the cylinder this blue color the oil pressure pushes this pistons outward as the pistons cannot push this unit because it's a fixed one so the pressure is applied over these balls which makes to move this complete housing in an axial way instead of pushing outwards the balls will help to move in an axial way so like that the lateral movement is converted into the axial movement the oil is coming here pushing to the end then when during the further rotation the piston again starts moving inside the cylinder when the piston starts moving inside the cylinder oil whatever is gathered in the cylinder will be thrown out precisely speaking this is the reverse function to the hydraulic pump in the pump oil goes inside the pistons from the tank and when the pump shafts rotates this plungers will push the oil outside with the pressure so how that's how the pump works precisely speaking the hydraulic pump converts the mechanical energy into the fluid energy whereas in the motor the fluid energy is converted into the mechanical energy so like this it rotates and this input goes to the travel gearbox in the device motor is over then the gearbox comes so this is the motor inside and this is the gearbox this collar is provided as explained you to fix the sprocket wheel another component inside the travel motor is the multiple disc brake these figures i am showing only for the illustration purpose okay so the multiple disc brake will be like this there will be series of plates arranged in alternate way this is the friction plate next one is the reaction plate friction plate is with sintered material with internal teeth mounted over the barrel housing which has the horizontal slots so this teeth of this internal plates will freely move over the housing and the reaction plates are mounted inside the housing this is the housing the housing will be having the internal slots so this splines this this teeth will go on slides inside the splines of the housing housing is the fixed one it will not move okay what happens all this together always held with the help of the spring force so when this is in fixed position always held together with the help of spring force this also will not rotate means barrel also will not rotate when the barrel will not rotate shaft will not rotate and there will not be any drive to the gearbox so if you want to move the gearbox first you should rotate the motor 
before the oil pressure is applied to the pistons inside the motor oil pressure is applied here in the clutch pack against the force of the springs and the plates are released once the plates are released then the housing will become free then it starts moving so when it is rotating the output rotates and the drive goes to the gearbox the internal gears also will start rotating the brakes are necessary for the excavator because sometimes excavator has to be parked or has to be traveled on the inclined surfaces so to arrest the falling or sliding of the machine the the travel motor is always in brake applied position but when we want to move or apply the travel device then only first the brakes are released and then the travel motor is rotated next comes to the travel gearbox this is the travel gearbox this is also a planetary reduction gearbox we discussed about the planetary reduction gearbox in case of the swing device the travel gearbox is slightly complex over the swing device because the swing device gearbox is having two stages of plant reduction and there will be straight reduction in the first stage and also second stage here it is little bit little bit complex the principle is same reducing the maximum speed and obtaining the maximum torque here you can see this is the motor these are the housings various housing and this is the sprocket fitted to this collar and this is a, one of the housing having ring gears inside okay this is the first set of planet sorry this is the first set of planetary which gets the direct drive from this motor output motor output will give acts as a sun gear to the first set so from here reduction takes place and this as the acts as the sun gear to the second planetary from here reduction then drive goes here again this gear acts as the sun gear to the third planetary here also reduction takes place so there will be number of planetary gears some cases it will be four and some cases it will be three okay so ultimately the output will be from this housing from this housing input from the motor output of series of reductions and three stages output will be from this housing so to this housing this sprocket wheel is fitted apart from this gears and the motor you can see several bearings and thrust washers and also some seals here these are the seals seals are provided to prevent the leakage of the oil which is available for lubricating the gear teeth and as well as the bearings bearings are provided for each and every gear to minimize the friction so as i told you there will be two travel devices one is for the left side and one is for the right side one of the cut section of the travel device looks like this up to here this is a motor you can see this is the pump pistons this is the pump housing and this is the Ducon seal this one this is the bearing this is the bearing this is the first planetary second planetary and third planetary and this is the collar housing this is the ring gear housing and this is the collar to fix the sprocket wheel input from the motor after series of reduction output through this housing please go through the video serial number 30 for the detailed explanation of the planetary gear system function how the seven principles works out in a planetary gear mechanism however i will just brief you here also take a set of the planetary gears the planetary gear will be having three elements the sun gear the planetary and the ring gear the principle is like that 
in these three elements if you give the input from one device and hold the other device i mean apply the brake or fix rigidly the output will be from the third device let us say here sun gear planetary and ring gear let us say this is the line looks like this we are giving input from the sun gear with certain rpm and we hold the ring gear so zero rpm then what will be the result here the input with certain rpm here it is zero rpm the result will be like this so what happens at the planetary the speed is minimized but the direction of rotation is same so when you hold the ring gear apply the input power through the sun gear take the output through the planetary gear the principle is that one the speed is reduced that is the torque is increased but the direction of the rotation of the input device and output device are same same way seven different speeds can be obtained through the single planetary gear mechanism this is the principle applied in the swing gear box as well as the travel gear box now the device is over that is modern gear box let us look into the other components the other components first we will look into the sprocket wheel it is made with the forged steel having teeth to its peripheral and also inside holes provided to fix this wheel to the output member of the travel gear box so when the travel gear box rotates the sprocket wheel also rotate let us just see how our cycle pedal when we pedal how the cycle moves it is also just like the sprocket wheel fitted to the cycle pedal so it's a chain when the wheel is rotating with our force the chain also rotates because the teeth of the sprocket wheel are meshed between the pins or bushings of this chain so when the chain is moved with the help of sprocket wheel so the chain also rotates the wheel fix it to the cycle wheel same way this functions in the excavator also these teeth will come and sit over the these bushings so when the wheel is rotated the sprocket wheel pushes this bush makes to rotate the link assembly because the link assembly sorry because the link assembly it is connected like in electrical shape to the frame so sprocket wheel is rotating and this links also rotating like this the construction of the links is like that the links are made with forged steel this high quality steel to be wear resistant and having various components two links one is called left side or right side with a special shape or connected with the help of the tight bushing this green one and to anchor this bushing there will be a pin will be provided here steel pin and pin will be having internal drill passes through this drill passes red passes the lubricating oil is pumped here so this lubricating oil lubricates the these moving surfaces the pin outer surface and as well as the bush inner surface when the link is moving when the link is moving the flexibility is required here between the bush and the pin and the seals are provided to prevent the leakage of the oil from inside this is how the construction of the link and there should be some mechanism to contact the ground the whole mission weight lies on the plates these are the again forged steel plates these plates are fitted over the link assembly these are the plates depending upon the uses and application various types of shoe plates are available this is called single grozer normally used for the bulldozers these are the double grozer and these are the triple grozer used in the case of excavators 
So these plates are fitted over the links. When they are fitted, they looks like this. This is the link assembly, this one, and over the link assembly, plates are fitted with the help of bolts. The sprocket teeth comes and sits in between the bushings. This is about the sprocket and link. The idler. The sprocket wheel is to drive this complete chain assembly. When the chain assembly is moved, the machine will move in the desired direction. The, what is the purpose of this idler wheel? There should be another component to support this complete track chain. It should not slide either direction or direction and it should maintain required tension and it should move in a defined path. So to guide to this track chain and to prevent the sprawling of this track chain, this idler is, is fitted at the opposite end of the frame. The internal construction of the idler looks like this is the hollow place. This is called tread where this this bushing will come and always will be sliding here. It is subjected for wear along with the bushing. And this is the yoke. It will be in this direction actually yoke. And this yoke is again supported with the track extension shielder which I will explain you. These are the bearings or bushings. These are the seals. The center one is the pin. Again, there will be lubricant. To lubricate this bushing and pin, because the idler will be rotating when the track chain is rotating. So there should be lubrication for this. The lubricating oil is provided between the bearings and pins and to prevent the leakage or as the leakage seals are provided. This is how idler looks. This particular surface is subjected for wear depending upon the application. Idler is over and next is the this one which supports the track chain from the top this is called carrier roller so this is fixed to the frame and this roller will be rotating freely again over the pin there will be complete bushings again see oil seals and oil will be there this is called the track roller these are the track rollers, the bottom one. The track rollers not only guide this track chain, but also bears the complete load of the machine. And this tread, this one and this one is called tread, shell is subjected for wear in due course of time. This collar is provided to guide this links or track chain so that it will not slide this direction or direction. Same way the collar is provided here. In case of track rollers, we can see two types of track rollers. This is called single flange where the link is both the links are secured between these two collars and other one is called the double flange. Each link is secured here and in this slot. When you see the construction of the roller, it looks like this. This is the shell, which is always exposed for the wear. These are the collars, which are fixed to the frame here. These collars, they are fixed, they will not rotate. And these are the seals. This is the seal, this is the pin, these are the bearings. Okay, assembled together. And lubricating oil is provided inside. So, the roller will be rotating, the roller will be rotating. Next comes to the other component, track, spring and tensioner assembly. We discussed, this is the idler, the idler yoke will be in this direction. This from here to this unit is called the track adjusting cylinder from here to here is a track adjusting cylinder also spring this is the track cylinder this one this is the spring 
the purpose of the track cylinder is to adjust the length between the sprocket outer and the idler outer if you pump more grease inside it is filled with grease if you pump more grease through pumping there will be some pumping port will be there if you pump more grease here the cylinder rod is extended outwards when the cylinder rod is extended it pushes the idler outwards when the idler is pushed outwards because this is fixed sprocket is fixed when the cylinder idler is fixed outside it carries the complete chain assembly outwards so it makes the chain to become tight if we want to lose the chain for any purpose of replacement or if you want to lose the chain little bit more you have to open that grease plug because of this mechanical load automatically slight amount of grease starts coming out from here and the grease starts coming out it automatically loses so to adjust the track tension the grease cylinder is used and over the track cylinder there is a spring coil spring the purpose of coil spring is mainly to absorb the shocks when the excavator is traveling it moves on very rough surfaces like stones and all so or sometimes even the front portion may hit some uneven surfaces also to absorb all these kinds of shocks the spring is provided this this is called sag this kind of looseness is called the sag it is essential to maintain certain sag of the chain this side and that side as recommended by the manufacturer chain should never be fully tight if the chain is tight it wears very fast and also noise it also creates a lot of load on that complete travel mechanism and the elongation of the links will be there at very fast rate at the same time it should not be too loose if it is too loose there is a possibility it will slide over slide from the slide away from the idler and also it will not enough grip is not obtained so to avoid all these things certain amount of sag has to be maintained the complete component of the track chain is subjected for wear so this has to be checked at periodical intervals if you want to increase the sag just remove some grease so that chain will become loose if you want to increase the tension or reduce the sag just pump some grease this is how the track tension is to be maintained now i'll just brief you how it works the travel device is the machine this is the lower frame this is the track okay to move the machine track has to be moved like the tires moves in the wheeled machine that is the truck or car whatever may be so to move this track the sprocket has to be moved to move this bracket there is a gearbox so the gearbox has to rotate to rotate the gearbox there is a hydraulic motor behind that one hydraulic motor has to be rotated to rotate the hydraulic motor we will supply the hydraulic fluid from the main pump through the control valve this is how the machine will move forward and reverse or will negotiate a turn as desired by the operator this is at most the figure shown here is pertains to the bulldozer this is called elevated sprocket whereas in the excavators you cannot see the elevated sprocket the excavator the sprocket will be here only so don't worry about this figure just go through how the track chain will rotate when the sprocket wheel is rotating go through these six pages notes in case you have any queries please do contact me through the email please share this video to your friends and subscribe to my channel